Persian space monkey. It's not a National Enquirer headline. It's true. Maybe. The Iranian Defense Ministry said today that it's launched a live monkey into space, calling it a giant step. The move is being seen as a way of showing off to the West, since the same sort of long-range ballistic technology that propels Iranian satellites into war, but could be put to use perhaps delivering, say, nuclear warheads. Iran released images of a small grey monkey being strapped, strapped into a seat and loaded into a Kavashgar rocket. State media reports that the rocket reached a height of more than 75 miles. However, there was no way for foreigners to independently confirm this story. Joining us on set to discuss this is HuffPost senior science editor David Freeman. David, what do we know about this? Well, not a lot more than you said, just that the uh, reports indicate that the... Uh, They've, they put this monkey up, they didn't identify the kind of a monkey, but they said it was a monkey that went up to about, uh, you know, 120 kilometers. It was returned safely, it was returned intact, at least they said. <laughs> intact? So, Did they say whether it was alive? Intact, and it was, they, the, I think the English language TV uh, station in Iran said that it did return alive. Okay. Um, and that's, of course, the hard part. It's easy to, to set a monkey in a space, it's much harder to bring a monkey back alive. Yes, I mean, space. we all remember the early days of uh, the American space program where monkeys were the first, you know, right. you know, there was a dog, I think, there was a cosmonaut so, dog, and then there was a, right. there were American monkeys. There were American chimps, there was uh, cosmonauts, uh, or the uh, Soviets put up a dog named Laika mm. in the 50s also. Uh, some of those animals died. Uh, some of the uh, chimps came back from Earth, uh, came back safely. And I think the, the issue here, of course, is that some of the early U.S. Uh, space program used ballistic missiles, uh, mm. rockets that were originally developed for to deliver warheads. And so the concern here is if they can put a, you know, put a monkey up in space, they can deliver warheads. Yeah, I mean, now. do you know how similar that kind of technology is? Is it basically the same? It's basically thing? the same thing, yeah. 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 So this is not like North Korea where they shoot off a little rocket and then it just it fizzles. This is uh, well, I'm not, I don't know the details of that, but th this is clearly something that's of concern to the Israelis and the Americans about yeah. it because it could just shift the balance of power. Is it tricky to do to put a satellite into orbit? Uh, well, it's not clear that this was, in, was put into orbit or just went into, into oh, space. Oh, I see. Probably just went into, into a suborbital flight. Right. Came that's back not down. really, that's like going into space the Richard Branson way, right? Well, Where you kind of just go <laughs> up into a suborbital loop and then you come back in a parabolic thing and right. come back down. Well, right. that's, that's what we did in the early days of the space, or our own space program. We put up right. the first, our first astronauts went up into suborbital flights that were not orbital until John Glenn did that. Okay, right. So that's, yes, that's, that's an early first step. And it's spacey enough that it would be able to take a, a nuclear war. I mean, you don't have to go into space in order to be able to launch a nuclear warhead. Well, exactly, because yeah. they're not going to be, they don't need to go around the Earth to get to where they would want to put it. Yeah, interesting. Okay, and I think there's, there's, there's all kinds of geopolitical implications in terms of the Iranians trying to strengthen their hand in nuclear negotiations and so right. on. Right. They claim that they're not interested in, in, putting, a, in putting a ballistic missile to deliver a warhead, hmm. but... Courses. But then they do things like this. Right. And you think it's probably not just about the monkey. I don't know. <laughs> you're a science guy, you're not a geopolitics <laughs> guy. Let's bring the hangout in. Eric, James, Jewel, uh, what do you guys make of this? Anything? I think it's kind, I wanna... of, uh, it's, it's kind of devious on the part of the Iranian, uh, Iranians to use a monkey, because a monkey is inherently cute and inherently funny. <laughs> uh, but if it's really masking some devious purpose, I was just picturing like that scene in Apollo 13, where the guy's like, we've never lost a man in space, but the Iranians be like, we've never lost a monkey in space, damn it, and the failure is not an option. But of course it's very serious, because we could all get near. Jill? So is this the Max, uh, the Felix Baumgartner version of going into space minus Red Bull, basically? <laughs> he was the guy who did the, the, the that terrifying right, orbital jump. jump. So it's basically, uh, they did the same thing, right? They sent the rocket up and realized that it can come back without catching on fire, and he lit. Well, I'm, I mean, I wonder, I think that they've had, uh, they've had flights before. I think they've had orbital rocket launches, uh, so, sorry, suborbital rocket launches before. And they put other animals in space. They put turtles into space, a road into space, I think right. some earthworms into space. So they're well working previously. up, they're clearly working up yes, the hierarchy the of the food step. chain until, right. they're, until they're going to put a, a person in space, presumably. Probably. Uh, yeah, because a turtle <laughs> is, is the least impressive animal you could put in space. Well, really. worms and turtles, yes. Well, worms, <laughs> perhaps worms, yeah. The, uh, some, kind of, some kind of micro microscopic organism perhaps. Eric, what do you make of this? I, I think that, you know, they're way definitely way behind where we are in terms of technology, but the threat that they can get into space is kind of dangerous, especially regarding the warhead. But one of the things I think that is kind of being ignored is a, a little bit is the explosion at the one uh, facility, nuclear facility that ha allegedly happened yesterday. Mm. I mean, the Stutnex attack in 2008 that took out some of their centrifuges, how damaging could this attack actually be to the Iranian nuclear capacity if it happened? Yeah, just to so clarify that. So I think that goes in tandem with the record, with the to, uh, rocket launch. 
Just to clarify that for people who don't know the story, the other part of this story is that there's reportedly, well, Israel and the US are saying that there's been a massive explosion at one of uh, Iran's underground nuclear uh, centrifuge facilities, uh, and the Iranians are denying it, but then they always deny it, that sort of thing. So it's hard to know what to make of that. But yes, it could. I mean, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this was some kind of counter-espionage thing. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, James or Joel? The monkey could have been a duplicate monkey. We cannot trust these Iranians. Uh, it could be putting any kind of monkey in space and showing us a similar monkey, and I think we'd all believe it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, take that where you will. I, I definitely do think that we should have a little bit of concern about what they're testing and what's going on. And what bothered me the most about this article is the whole back and forth about why they can't get together and why they can't talk and why they can't meet each other. And the fact that we're doing this right now makes it, means that there's no excuse why they can't have a conversation. I think that their space monkeys and our space monkeys should meet and try to find some kind of common ground. Perhaps the world will be more peaceful. Uh, one, of our right, viewers, uh, one of our viewers has just left a comment on our website, Nihilus Day. He says, Persian Space Monkey would be an excellent name for a band. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> David, thanks so much for, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. Thank Great you. to see you. Look forward Thank to speaking you. with you soon.